So far, we have learned about Newton's laws, Newton's first law, second law, and third law. And we have understood that how do we apply these laws in solving problems and real life situations. Now, the, I'm going to ask a question to you. Why the world the way it is? Why the world shouldn't be in a different way? Why we are how we are? Why the sun rising in the east? Why the sun is setting in the west? Why the earth is rotating about its own axis? And why it is revolving around the sun? So all these natural things we are observing every day. But if you ask the questions ourselves, then it is a very tricky question to us. And critical thinking is required here. But in physics, we have answers to all these questions. And the answer is conserv conservation laws. What are conservation laws? Conservation means constant. So these laws tells you that there are some physical quantities remain constant. Because of they are constant, the world behaving the way it is. The natural things what you are seeing around us, because of the physical constants remains constant. So we need to we need to say thanks to physicists to explain those natural things based on these conservative laws. So let me give you a small uh, explanation about all these laws. Of course, all these laws are not required for us. We are we, we're going to discuss about only one law, but let me explain you briefly about all these laws. So first law, conservation of energy, means energy remains constant. So you learned that, uh, you may be heard about that energy, mechanical energy mainly uh, of two types, kinetic energy and potential energy. So when you are running on the road or walking on the road, the energy what you have is kinetic energy. When you throw a ball in the upward direction, the ball has potential energy at the highest point. So when you are in motion on a road, you have kinetic energy. When you are any object moving against the gravity, then it has potential energy. So kinetic energy, potential energy changes, but total energy always remains constant. Because the total energy remains constant, the body is behaving the way it is. So the next one, conservation of momentum. Earlier class, we discussed about what is momentum. Now here the momentum remains constant. Until unless an external force acting on the body, the momentum of the body stays same. And because of that only, you can observe an example. Let me tell you. In Diwali, you put Diwali bomb on a, on a surface, and uh, you uh, lit the what do you call uh, the bomb. In a few seconds, the bomb blasted. After the blast, what happened to the fragments of the bomb? Will they all these fragments? Will they go in upward direction, straight vertically up? No. We know that all these fragments spread around the bomb all 360 degrees. So why the fragments are spreading around the bomb in 360 degrees? Why? The answer is conservation of momentum. Next, conservation of uh, angular momentum. Conservation of angular momentum. Here also angular momentum remains constant when no external torque acts on the body. It is uh, applicable in rotatory motion. Conservation of charge means total charge remains constant. You can show high charge somewhere, you can show low charge somewhere, you can show positive charge, you can show negative charge, but total charge always remains constant. So, uh, we can discuss more about this conservative loss, but I told you that uh, in our class, we are not uh, discussing all this, those are not in your uh, portion. So, we have only conservation of momentum. So, we discuss more about conservation of momentum. So, yeah, one more thing. You may wonder that why I have left conservation of mass. Let I need to explain you. Conservation of mass. Maybe you you may learn you learned or heard in chemistry classes. The mass of the reactants in a chemical reaction 
is equal to mass of the products. Hydrogen plus oxygen gives rise to water H2O, H2 plus O2 gives rise to H2O. So, how much amount of hydrogen and oxygen you have taken before the reaction, the after the reaction maybe you get a new chemical compound, the total mass remains constant that you have learnt in chemistry classes. So, mass remains constant is what called conservation of mass, but later it was um, disproved by Einstein saying that the total mass not remains constant after the reaction some mass is changed in the form of energy called binding energy which is the famous uh, uh, law we can say and the famous formula you may heard that E equals to mc square mass energy equivalent. So, once this formula was introduced by Einstein the conservation of mass is replaced by E equal to mc square, but this formula is more applicable in nuclear reactions. So, as I told you we are coming back to the conservation of momentum. So, conservation of momentum says total momentum remains constant unless an external force act on the body. That means, when F equal to 0, an external force not act on the body, force is not acting implies momentum P equal to constant. This is what conservation of momentum. How it is possible? Let me derive the formula. F formula according to Newton's second law you know F is M A, M A equal to 0. This M A can also be written as delta P by delta T we learned in the earlier class equals to 0. Implies delta P equal to 0 because delta T goes to right hand side multiplied by 0 it becomes 0. And you know that delta P is nothing but change in momentum, which is P2 minus P1, final momentum minus initial momentum, which is equal to 0. Then implies you can write P2 minus P2 equals to P1. That means final momentum equals to initial momentum. What is the initial momentum you have? The final velocity has the same momentum. That means momentum is not changing, that is, momentum is constant and it is only possible when there is no external force acts on the body. This is what called conservation of momentum. So, one more time when no external force acts on the body the, the, then the momentum remains constant which is called conservation of momentum.